Hello and welcome to another home time art challenge with Mrs. White. Today we're going to be talking about watercolor painting with markers. Now this is kind of a continuation of two different videos. The first one was the shamrock one that I did way back in the beginning of all this distance learning stuff and it actually combined um, wax resist with crayons and then watercolor marker painting on top of it. And a video I did last week that talked about just watercolor painting for flowers and what to do if you don't have watercolors at home. So here's that. You can go back to look at either of those videos um, if you want a little bit more background knowledge. But otherwise, this project can be done um, on its own. All you need is pencil, paper, um, washable markers, water, brush, or a Q-tip or cotton ball, something to blend that water, and something to cover your table. And this is why I did not do that. I did have um, a big stack of paper underneath it, so I was okay. But you should definitely put a tablecloth or a trash bag underneath yours to make sure that you protect your table. Okay, so step one, sketch your design. If you watched my last video, I showed you a really cool transfer um, technique. Uh, if not, go back and watch that, or you can window trace your design or draw it with free draw um, with pencil. Anyway, you want it light until you get it right. Step two, you're going to use markers to color your work. Now, be aware of color theory, right? Think about that color wheel. If it's across from each other, it might make a icky brownish gray color. If they're closer to each other on the color wheel, they're going to be um, friends and blend mix well okay so that's why I like yellow and orange I can blend green and yellow I can blend blue and or I'm sorry purple and pink I can blend because pink is a value of red so um, pink and purple or red and purple are next to each other on the color wheel so here's my color with just my markers it looks cool like that right I could totally just leave it like that but if I want that cool watercolor effect all I have to do now is add some water now be careful, if you're using um, just regular copy paper, it's pretty thin, so you can get holes, um, which is no fun, right? Um, if you do, don't panic. Either make a beautiful oops out of that hole, or make it again. You made it once, you're the artist, you can do it again. Um, so no panicking, but um, just the way to avoid that is not a ton of water, and also to dab rather than kind of rub your paintbrush back and forth. Um, dabbing um, is definitely safer with that thinner paper. If you have thicker paper, that helps too, but you can still rip that paper as well. Um, also, keep in mind, this is not an immediate gratification kind of blending. So when you put that water on there, it is not going to be like regular watercolor or the paint we use in the art studio at school. This is going to be more of a slower blend. So keep that in mind. You're going to kind of put your water, you're going to see it blend a little bit, and then as it soaks, it's going to blend a little bit more, which is really fun because you kind of get to see your artwork evolve. Um, if you're watching closely, you can kind of see that in this time lapse that's split, sped up. Um, but also, it's important to realize that if you put too much water, it's going to continue to blend or bleed. And um, you could end up with really more faded look than you're wanting. Um, so just keep that in mind. Kind of practice makes perfect. You can always add more water. You can't really take it out. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that your um, brush is going to pick up some of the color from the marker. So you want to keep cleaning your brush fairly often. So if I did one of those purple petals and then I went straight into the center with the yellow, that would get kind of icky, right? Because yellow and um, purple don't blend very well. Um, so I wanted to make sure before I switched to a different color, my brush was completely clean. Right there, you see what I'm talking about. Um, also remember things in the distance are smaller and um, less detailed. So when I started doing the flowers that were in the background, um, I wanted them to blend a little bit more, maybe have deeper shadows. Then when I went to the background, I wanted that to blend even more. So that's why, if you noticed, I even got a bigger brush and started blending those. Um, <laughs> all right, step four, let it dry for about 30 minutes or so. Let it dry, let it dry. And then you can come back and add more layers if you would like. 
Um, I actually went and ate dinner, let mine dry for about 30 minutes, and then I came back and I was like, whoa, that bled, that blended a lot more than I wanted. I want some more um, definition on the, my petals. It was still a little bit wet, so I was able to kind of go in really carefully. You don't want to make a hole, um, and you don't want to get it too dark. Don't overdo it, but just a little bit of um, purple that I added. You can tell it's literally blending as I'm working it, um, working on it. So keep in mind that will still blend a little bit more. It's kind of dependent on what kind of look you want. Um, but don't be afraid to add those layers and have fun with it. If you don't want it to blend as much, you can definitely let it dry longer and then you can outline it um, when it's completely dry and then it won't blend more. Worst case scenario, you're like, oh, I did want it to blend some. You put some more water on it. Easy peasy. Oh my goodness, my dog's getting upset. Um, but you get the point. Um, don't forget to upload these to your um, Artsonia so that we can all see what you have been up to and be inspired by it. I am missing seeing your guys' art every single day so much. Um, so please share it with us. And you can also be entered in that drawing um, on Monday morning's announcement for some free art supplies sent from Amazon. Um, have a fabulous week and I'll see you again soon.